Miracles are unexplained changes in the natural order. They defy the impossible and are by definition rare. From Moses parting the Red Sea to Jesus resurrecting from the dead, the Bible is chock full of the miraculous, and for centuries scholars have wondered how they could have happened. While science tries to explain the natural world and not the miraculous, occasionally scientists weigh in on the science behind biblical miracles. Ready to hear what they have to say? Well, I'm Mike with List 25, and here are 25 Bible stories with logical scientific explanations. Twenty-five. In the book of Genesis, it says humanity was formed from clay. A Cornell University research has proposed that clay may have been the starting place of life. Clay absorbs water and creates an ideal environment for chemicals to react with each other and create proteins, DNA, and eventually living cells. Scientists also found that clay hydrogel could have protected the chemical processes until these living cells had time to be enveloped with a cell membrane. 24. The Tower of Babel is a story where the people of Earth decide to create a tall tower, and God scattered them across the world by using different languages. For some time, it was believed buildings such as a tall tower were impossible for ancient people. However, scientists have pointed to the ancient ziggurats in Babylon, especially the ziggurat known as Edamanonki, as the possible Tower of Babel. Ziggurat can be translated as to rise high, and Edamanonki is historically considered one of the most significant and labor-intensive projects in Babylon. 23. The virgin birth, aka the Immaculate Conception, was told in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, and tell of Mary conceiving a child from the Holy Spirit. While there are many theories about this miracle, science claims there's a possibility Mary may have experienced parthenogenesis, the process in which a mother essentially clones herself. This has been shown to happen in insects, snakes, Komodo dragons, sharks, and mice. The problem with this theory is that the parthenogenetic outcome would be female, because it would have to have two X chromosomes like the mother. 22. In the book of Exodus, the Israelites are escaping Egypt, but to do so they have to cross the Red Sea. In the story, Moses parts the sea with his staff, and they're able to cross on dry land. A scientist named Carl Drews has put forward a possible answer to how this happened. According to his master's thesis, the Israelites crossed the Sea of Reeds when 60 mile per hour winds blew through the region causing wind set down, which could blow the water apart. This has occurred at other places, like Lake Erie. 21. In Exodus, it says God turns the Nile River to blood. Scientists have proposed it's more likely a red tide of toxic red algae washed into the Nile. Another researcher proposed that a deadly single-celled organism could have killed all the fish, and their blood filled up the river. 20. As Moses frequently asked the Egyptian pharaoh to let his people go, he refused. In turn, God punished Egypt for it, causing ten plagues, starting with the Nile turning red with blood. Afterward, the area was covered in frogs, lice, wild animals, diseased livestock, boils, hail, locusts, darkness for three days, and the death of the firstborn. Scientists have claimed they may have found the source for these plagues. They discovered evidence of an ecological disaster hundreds of miles away that could have brought the plagues to Egypt. 19. With the Israelites out of Egypt and walking around in the desert, they were desperate for water. In the story, Moses strikes a rock and water comes pouring out. Scientists have explained limestone rock, which is rather abundant near Mount Sinai, is soluble and can hold tons of water. 18. While Moses was in the wilderness by himself, he witnessed a burning bush, and it spoke to him as the voice of God. Scientists theorize that it's possible Moses witnessed an earthquake light, a bizarre phenomenon after or before an earthquake occurs. The light looks like a luminous burning flame. 17. However, the earthquake light theory doesn't explain a physical bush burning, or that it says the bush burned without being burnt up. Another scientific theory explains the bush was likely under a volcanic vent, which makes the ground incredibly hot. Researchers from Norway discovered this phenomenon and found similar burning bushes that wouldn't stop burning. 16. About that whole speaking to God thing at the burning bush? Scientists have an opinion on that as well. 
A professor of psychology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem said Moses could have been under the influence of a plant called ayahuasca, which can cause serious hallucinations. 15. While the Israelites wandered around in the desert for 40 years, they needed something to eat to survive. In the story, God provided manna from heaven. The scientific explanation is that it was likely a sweet secretion of plant lice that infected shrubs in the area. It could have also been algae or wind-dispersed lichen. 14. King Hezekiah asked the prophet Isaiah for a sign from God, and Isaiah pointed to the sundial. Hezekiah could have asked for it to move backward or forward. He chose forward, thinking it would be the greater sign. God granted the request and moved the sundial forward. A scientific explanation of the event points to clouds and light refraction as a possible way the sundial pointer moved forward. 13. In Genesis, it states God rained down fire and brimstone from heaven onto Sodom and Gomorrah. Researchers who cracked an ancient cuneiform tablet discovered an astronomer back then who recorded seeing a meteor. They believed this could have been around the same time Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, explaining a meteor was the cause for the destruction. 12. In the Gospel of Matthew, there are three wise men, or magi, who saw a star in the east. They followed the star and found baby Jesus in Bethlehem. An astronomer at the University of Sheffield has thoroughly studied this and believes it's likely they didn't see a star at all, but a triple conjunction when Jupiter and Saturn align in a short period of time. 11. In the Gospels, as the disciples are fishing in the Sea of Galilee, Jesus appears to them walking on water. U.S. and Israeli scientists explain a cold spell on the region could have partially frozen the sea, allowing Jesus to walk on the ice. 10. As the prophet Elijah faced off against the worshippers of Baal, he set up a competition to see whose god is actually real. As he set up his altar, Elijah poured gallons of water on top of it. When finished, he prayed, and God immediately sent down fire from heaven on a clear day. Anvil lightning is the most likely scientific explanation for this phenomenon. Anvil lightning frequently stretches across the sky as if from nowhere, and pouring tons of water on wood on a mountain would certainly make the altar a major conductor of electricity. 9. The battle between David and Goliath is one of the most famous stories in the Bible, symbolizing a fight between the underdog and a behemoth. But many wondered if Goliath actually could have been a giant, or as tall as the Bible claims. A scientific study points to it being genetically possible. According to PubMed Central, two doctors claim it's likely Goliath inherited a pituitary disorder called familial acromegaly, or gigantism. 8. In the book of Joshua, as the Israelites are entering the Promised Land, they battle against the great city of Jericho. As they marched around the city, the walls came tumbling down, allowing them to conquer the city. Believed to be a miracle, some scientists think the wall came down because of an earthquake, based on new analysis of recent excavations in the area. 7. In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John describes having visions of the end times in great detail, describing step by step what will happen in very cryptic and symbolic language. Scientists' explanation of this phenomenon? Similar to Moses, the Apostle John was likely on some very serious drugs. Scientists did a study connecting psychedelic drugs and many ancient religious stories describing some bizarre and trippy events. 6. The story of Cain and Abel is the first murder in the Bible. Cain was a farmer, while Abel was a herdsman. Some have speculated this story could have been an ancient retelling of how the Neanderthals were murdered by Homo sapiens. It's well known that Neanderthals wandered from place to place while Homo sapiens stayed put, pointing to the herdsman and farmer analogy. This story could be an oral retelling of how eventually the humans committed genocide against the Neanderthals. 5. The story of Noah's flood is legendary. For many years, scientists discredited the idea that such a cataclysmic flood could occur. However, geologists studying the river valleys of Washington State discovered it was created by a giant glacier in Montana. The floodwaters would have been enormous to create it. It could be possible that a glacier started the flood in ancient Mesopotamia. 4. The Ark of the Covenant was the centerpiece of the Israelites and the MacGuffin in the movie Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
Ancient Israelites who inappropriately handled it were immediately struck down by God. An engineer from the Lewis Institute of Technology studied the construction of the Ark as explained in the Bible and determined it was a perfect simple electric condenser. With the right conditions, this condenser could potentially hold 10,000 volts of electricity and easily electrocute someone. 3. In the book of Acts, it says on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles and they all began to speak in different languages. Speaking in tongues is a common tradition through various sects of the Christian church, and neuroscientists from the University of Pennsylvania did research on five women while they spoke in tongues and discovered their frontal lobes were quiet, as well as the language centers of the brain. Perhaps the apostles were harnessing this aspect of the brain? Two. In the Gospels, Jesus does many miraculous things, including curing the deaf, the blind, and people who couldn't walk. So. How did he do it? New research in the placebo effect has argued that mind-body healing is very real. Dr. David Calmez of the Mayo Clinic performs a treatment called vertebroplasty to help his patient's spine. Calmez decided to do a trial of a placebo effect of his surgeries on 130 patients, randomizing who gets the real treatment and who gets the placebo. In the study, many patients with the placebo treatment healed just as well as those that had the real treatment. One. The story of the resurrection of Jesus comes around every Easter, and is in all the gospel narratives in the Bible. After he died on the cross, Jesus was put in a tomb, and after three days rose again and ascended into heaven. In the swoon theory, scholars have proposed Jesus didn't die on the cross, but rather passed out, was put in the tomb, and then was freed three days later. Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button in the bottom right so you don't miss out on new ones every Monday through Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these three videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.